Hello, good morning. I'm Ashok Rokade, consultant rhinologist and Andreas Kalbe, surgeon from Winchester and the University Hospital Southampton, UK. I welcome colleagues from around the world on behalf of our organizing team to this inaugural Winter Global Rhinology Endoscopic Sinus and Andreas Kalbe Surgery Webathon. Global Rhinology Network is a registered non-profit organization with a mission to foster surgical education in rhinology and skull-based surgery. We have successfully hosted annual multi-center live surgical webcast, The Lioness, since 2014 in collaboration with Lion Foundation. Thousands of surgeons from all corners of the world have benefited from it. More than 2,000 surgeons from 110 countries have registered for GRACE 2020. We will have hugely informative and engaging sessions presented by eminent rhinologists and skull-based surgeons from around the world. GRACE 2020 is hosted at the Global Telemedicine Studio of Professor Wilco Gronman in Utrecht in Netherlands. It is supported by Medtronic and Carl Stores. Thank you. Imagine, what if you could do even more to bring relief to your chronic rhinosinusitis patients with technology customized to your unique clinical and facility needs? Introducing Stealth Station Flex ENT Navigation System, a customizable system from Medtronic ENT, a market leader in image-guided surgery technology, featuring six hardware configurations, an optional portable card, two different electromagnetic emitter options, with flexibility in hardware design and optional software functionality, Get everything you need and nothing you don't with Stealth Station Flex ENT. Let's flex forward. Contact your Medtronic representative to customize a navigation solution that's right for you. So Ken Meko, he will be presenting the next session. So I will uh, shortly introduce uh, Ken. Ken is a uh, chairman of ENT department at uh, Ankara 
University Hospital, and he's also a faculty in uh, Austria. He is a president of uh, Confederation of uh, European ORL HNS, and he's also a leader of the rhinology section of uh, European Board Examination. So he'll be presenting on uh, his uh, topics, uh, draft one or two, uh, frontal sinusotomy in uh, IFAC classification terms. Uh, it will be IFAC two to five, and followed by Christos Yogalas, he'll be presenting on uh, modified endoscopic Lothrop. So can I invite uh, Chem to start the presentation, please? Thank you very much, uh, Ashok, for the kind uh, introduction. Uh, we already heard wonderful lectures uh, today. Uh, so uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you uh, today. And uh, I'll be uh, sharing our uh, experience on how we do approach to the uh, frontal sinus. Um, and uh, do you see my, my uh, screen? Yes, we can. We can okay, it. thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so um, let me also turn this on. Okay. Uh, I have nothing to disclose uh, to tell, uh, except being the president of the European Confederation of Otorhinolaryngology. And uh, using this chance, uh, I'd like to uh, remind all of you that due to the pandemic that we are uh, going through, the next uh, Congress of the European uh, ENT Society in Milano has been uh, postponed to uh, autumn 2022. Please save the date uh, for the uh, Europe's biggest event. You're all welcome. Uh, oops. Okay, so. So uh, I will be uh, first focusing on uh, draft 1 to a frontal sinusotomy and uh, we'll be trying to highlight the importance of the middle turbinate in our practice uh, and would like to share our uh, experience uh, uh, with that. Uh, principally, uh, we, frontal sinus is a place that we shouldn't be really touching if not needed. Uh, the drainage pathway should be respected, preserved, especially if there is uh, no disease along the frontal recess. Uh, or in the frontal sinus itself. But whenever uh, the surgery is needed, it could really be uh, challenging uh, due to the uh, fact that uh, the complex anatomy that has been already shown uh, in the previous lectures. Um, so um, the, what makes the anatomy complex is the preceding anterior etmoidal cells uh, getting into the uh, drainage pathway that narrow or shift the, the uh, frontal sinus range pathway in countless different ways according to the uh, pneumatization pattern in every individual. So this has been the, the classification that has been used before. Uh, and and uh, these are some ex um, uh, examples for that. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, newer classification has been already uh, presented uh, by Dr. Nair, uh, so I will not uh, go in detail uh, on that. So uh, coming to the uh, uh, technique, uh, the surgical technique, uh, in our hands uh, we do step-by-step -step removal of bony lamellas of cells along the obvious gap, uh, gaps and clefts, um, uh, and doing this cell by cell in front of the intact bulla etmoidalis you, you see the uh, bulla, uh, and this is the most commonly used technique established, at least in our hands. And here, uh, care must be taken to preserve as much intact mucosa as possible in, or, uh, in the osteum area in order to prevent stenosis due to scarring and osteoneogenesis. Uh, uh, here, uh, there is the, the concept that has been uh, published in 2002 uh, by Professor Stamberger, uh, named as uh, uncupping the egg, which is the removal of the last bony shell at the transition of the frontal sinus to the frontal uh, recess. Uh, 
And here, by uh, you know, uh, remembering him, I would like to take a small moment to really remember him because yesterday was uh, it's his uh, second uh, year that he has that we have lost him, uh, and I'm so happy to really uh, be influenced by this great teacher, mentor, uh, uh, and uh, having a share. Uh, wonderful moments later on throughout my career. Uh, so uh, actually in this technique uh, that he has been uh, uh, suggesting, you really need to dissect this little portion, uh, like uncupping the egg and reach to the frontal sinus. Another concept that has been uh, brought uh, was the vertical bar concept. Uh, to find the frontal sinus by Professor Stamm uh, from uh, Brazil. Uh, and that really relies on after the uncinectomy, the upper attachment of the uncinate process, uh, which is the medial lamella of the agonazi. Uh, uh, as it is often prominent uh, as a vertical bar, if you really do the, your dissection medial or posterior to it, you would really reach the uh, frontal sinus. But here, the um, Uncinet process uh, is really tricky because uh, of the multitude of different places it could uh, really attach on uh, the frontal recess. Uh, this is what, because uh, if we look uh, the whole thing through the uh, development, developmental point of view, the uncinet process uh, here uh, is, is growing or uh, developing from inferior to uh, superior. Uh, and, and that's the reason that it, it can attach many different uh, uh, places. Uh, but as you can see here in this developmental process, the middle turbinate is, is a constant. Uh, and throughout the parameterization of the middle turbinate, as if the uh, a glass blower is blowing through the frontal recess, the frontal uh, sinus becomes pneumatized, uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, and, and the, all the other etmoidal cells and the uncinate process also comes with that uh, uh, blowing uh, in, into the frontal uh, recess uh, inside, uh, and you see the pneumatization occurs. Uh, as you can see, the middle turbinate is still the constant here. Uh, actually, this is uh, also from the, from the uh, sagittal wheel, uh, a very uh, suprabullar frontal cell uh, narrowing the frontal sinus uh, drainage pathway. So if you really follow this concept, uh, uh, the, the uh, middle turbinate uh, is then the stable point to reach uh, to the frontal uh, sinus, uh, even if there is the uh, pathology uh, lying uh, lateral to that. And if you again watch back, what has been uh, suggested by Professor Stamberger is that uh, here uh, you also do follow the middle turbinate mucosa and remove the cells lateral uh, or the uh, uh, concept, uh, the vertical bar concept of Professor Stamm. Uh, here again, the, you follow actually the middle turbinate mucosa uh, and, and uh, you reach the frontal sinus uh, uh, by doing that. Uh, so this is a, a, a picture from our, uh, our uh, dissection book from uh, our department. Uh, and the ulcinate process has been uh, removed and the remnants, and this is going to be the vertical bar, and this will be the uncupping the egg when we remove these, but we will be following up the middle turbinate mucosa uh, into the frontal uh, recess. Uh, and even if, uh, if we do operate on a, a already operated uh, revision case where none of the uh, other um, um, uh, landmarks are there, the middle turbinate mucosa, if, it, if the middle turbinate is there, could really still uh, lead us to, into the uh, frontal uh, sinus. As you can see here, uh, the middle turbinate will have, its mucosa will have a continuity with the 
uh, frontal sinus. We should also remember that our dissection is uh, principally from posterior to anterior. And according to the anterior and posterior uh, cells uh, uh, in, in, that are prematized into the frontal recess, how steep we do the dissection may change, but it is a posterior to anterior dissection. So whenever we also uh, look for our CT scans on the coronal, uh, we should be really thinking of that and start uh, of thinking in a three-dimensional way from posterior to uh, anterior uh, on, on uh, our CT uh, scans. Here uh, is a dissection uh, from our uh, cadaver lab. So middle turbinate mucosa will follow, uh, will guide us into the uh, um, uh, frontal sinus. We are looking with a different angled endoscope. So after removing the frontal, uh, the uncinate process, this is going to be the, the vertical bar and this is going to be the uncupping the egg. But if we do uncup the egg and go uh, more lateral, we would really uh, get into the uh, 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 supra uh, buller uh, cell. Uh, but the, the real frontal sinus will be really along the middle turbinate uh, mucosa, and we are dissecting the, uh, the, uh, the, the cells in the frontal recess. And uh, after opening the supra uh, buller cell, there is another cell here, supra uh, buller frontal cell, but the real frontal sinus will be here. Uh, and this has been, the concept has already been shown in the previous lectures. And thus, I will really not get into the uh, classification, but in this technique that we are using uh, uh, to guide us the, into the frontal sinus, actually what complicates everything is the medial cells. Uh, the, uh, the frontal septal cell uh, as, as classified in this uh, 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 classification. When we look uh, actually to those cells, um, this has been uh, studied by a famous anatomist uh, professor, uh, Johannes Lang, uh, and, and he has, uh, um, in his dissections, demonstrated that in, uh, these are actually uh, etmoidal uh, cells being pneumatized into the nasal bone. So in his book, he calls those nasal cells and they could be really up to 39% uh, uh, and being in the medial uh, portion. Uh, and uh, here is the frontal recess. And it should be, when there is one, it is more medial here, actually not in these uh, sections that we look uh, more laterally, we see the uh, frontal beak, but it's more medial where the etmoidal bone have a junction with the nasal uh, bone. Uh, so only then actually we can understand that when that bone is pneumatizing, uh, it pushes our uh, frontal sinus pathway uh, to lateral. So this is an example. Uh, for example, you see the, the nasal cell here. Uh, and, and the middle turbinate mucosa will still guide us into the uh, frontal sinus, but we need to be really taking care of that uh, uh, nasal cell. Otherwise, we, would, we will uh, get into the nasal cell and we may think that this is the frontal sinus. So the mucosa of the middle turbinate comes in the presence of a nasal cell uh, here. Uh, as you can see, this is a nasal cell and the real frontal sinus will be again following the mucosa, uh, but we just need to check this uh, before the operation uh, on our CT scans, if the, the uh, uh, nasal cell is there uh, or not. So uh, this is the, uh, from uh, a patient with no nasal cell, you see this is the uh, pneumatization getting in, uh, uh, the dissection, uh, and I will just jump to the another uh, one showing the uh, nasal cell. If we follow uh, in, in this, uh, the, the right uh, nasal frontal pathway should be actually uh, uh, going more laterally in the presence of a, a nasal cell, as you can see here in, in, this, uh, in this patient. Uh, you see the 
uh, we're going, this is the middle turbinate mucosa, and we will be dissecting, and this is the nasal cell and the real frontal, si uh, frontal sinus will be there. And then we, we do open the connection between, and this is a nasal cell and this is the real frontal sinus pushed uh, uh, laterally. So again, this, the same uh, cadaver. So we have a uh, gun uh, uh, onto uh, a different uh, portion. So this is from a, a live surgery. This is the middle turbinate uh, mucosa. So uh, this is where the vertical bar is. There's no nasal cell in this, in this patient. So we're gonna be really following up uh, the middle turbinate mucosa to really uh, get into the uh, frontal uh, sinus. Another, another uh, case uh, with nasal polyps. Uh, so uh, I'll just jump again, middle turbinate mucosa and we are dissecting and uh, getting the lamellas one by one uh, and then uh, we do reach into the uh, frontal uh, sinus by really following up. And this is the end of the operation where everything is really open and the mucosa is intact uh, uh, and the draft uh, 2A has been uh, made. So another example, uh, again, uh, again, on the right side, no nasal cell. And on the left side, uh, there is a nasal uh, cell, as you can see. Uh, uh, we can give really many, many uh, uh, examples for that. Uh, we can use also the navigation systems, but it's, if you look for this in your uh, cases, you would really uh, see it is uh, really happening. So um, I will just uh, go fast to use my time uh, better to uh, talk a little bit uh, for the uh, use of navigation systems, uh, especially if you have massive polyposis, they, may, they might be really uh, helpful. Uh, um, uh, and if, especially if you do uh, navigate the endoscopes, you can really have uh, the feeling um, the, uh, where you are really looking at, and you can really mark the pathway uh, through the, uh, uh, beforehand, before the surgery, where you really want to uh, dissect. Uh, and this really always, almost always follows exactly the same. Uh, you see uh, the pattern that I have shown you on the, uh, on the uh, CT scans. And uh, it's exactly what I have already shown beforehand. Uh, and during the surgery, uh, this might be helpful uh, uh, to really go into the uh, frontal uh, sinus. And this is right after the dissection here. And uh, you can also see in the separate uh, screen that uh, you have reached uh, to your marking uh, during the uh, surgery. So uh, this is sometimes really very helpful if you really want to reach out very lateral portions. Uh, these are snapshots. So you do really do uh, uh, focus on here. You see you, you reach the very lateral portion, but you haven't reached the, uh, the, uh, your, your main target. So once you open the last lamella, uh, then the system shows you that, uh, uh, that you can uh, you, have, you have reached your, your target. So uh, the middle turbinate med, uh, medial mucosa is a reliable guide in, into the frontal sinus and most frontal sinusotomies. They should be protected and respected whenever possible. Uh, from the developmental point of view, um, frontal sinus pneumatization will always keep a continuity uh, with it. The only exception is the presence of a nasal cell or it's called a frontal septal cell in the latest uh, classification that pushes the frontal sinus drainage pathway uh, laterally and should be detected in the preoperative CT uh, for appropriate uh, dissection guidance into the uh, frontal 
uh, sinus, and this is actually at the end uh, what we always almost try to uh, achieve uh, um, a nice opening. Uh, and on the other side, again, uh, a, a nice uh, opening. And even if in the, in the presence of a, a nasal uh, uh, cell uh, that we cannot um, really get rid of all the uh, lamella, uh, we may uh, really um, get uh, some narrowing because of the nasal cell. Uh, and then we can use this to drain uh, uh, some mucosils, uh, as you can see. Uh, Uh, in, especially in cases uh, when the, the, the uh, opening is wide enough. Uh, but if it is not wide enough, then we may need to change the, our uh, approach to a draft type 2B is from the septum to the lamina papricia. Uh, and this is a unilateral enlargement procedure, actually. And uh, when we do that, uh, actually, then we, we can... We, uh, come to a much more bigger uh, opening, and through this opening, we can really uh, address different different uh, 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 problems uh, like this uh, CSF leak from the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. Here, uh, this is a draft type 2A. Uh, for inspection, it is enough. We, you see here exactly here where this attachment uh, is. Uh, there is a small CSF. Uh, leak. Uh, 2A is enough for uh, seeing that, but in order to be able to close this defect, uh, we need to enlarge our procedure from the septum to the lamina propriacea. This is the bony lamell, actually this one. Uh, uh, and uh, here you can see that we can enlarge enough and do our duraplasty with a 45 degree endoscope uh, uh, on the posterior wall of the frontal sinus to a draft type 2B opening. Or we can also go through uh, uh, and remove this uh, meningoencephalocele uh, and in order to be able to really address this, we need to enlarge our, our exposure uh, by drilling the uh, floor of the frontal sinus. Uh, and then uh, we can really uh, remove the uh, seal. And after the removal, then we gonna have a large enough opening uh, to, for further uh, manipulation, uh, uh, but more importantly later on for adequate uh, drainage uh, postoperatively. Now it will uh, keep open uh, after uh, the healing. Uh, or we can also uh, address uh, uh, unilateral uh, 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 lesions like that, and we would still have an open and intact uh, frontal sinus only by uh, draft type 2B. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our uh, collaborators uh, from uh, our university, from our department, uh, and just what would like to mention, uh, we had the good old times, but we are now born into a new reality. Actually, everything became very difficult within this uh, reality. And perhaps nowadays, uh, regarding frontal sinus, uh, the best patient could be the one without any frontal sinus uh, that we should really not be addressing because times are really very hard. Uh, and, and we are being asked to be like Darth Vader, uh, wearing a mask, doesn't visiting our uh, family, socially and emotionally in the distance. But thanks God we are connected to the webinar now and we need to follow the orders. So I'll be finishing my uh, uh, lecture here, uh, following the orders of a Ashok. <laughs> so I, I hope we can adapt uh, to these new times. 
So thank you very much. I would like to remind once again the uh, Congresses uh, and next year there will be the ERS in, in, in Greece uh, and the, uh, from the ESPS, uh, the Congress in Italy. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, attendance. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, we didn't really want uh, you to stop looking at uh, all these interesting cases. Uh, it's a wonderful talk. Thank you. So my yeah. question would be, when you deal with the frontal recess and widening, what would, do you prefer? Do you prefer the cold steel instruments or the powered instruments? Uh, I almost always uh, start with cold instruments, uh, do my dissections. And, and uh, I may use the, the powered instruments if there are a, a lot of excessive uh, poly polyps, for example, just okay. to remove them and to, to, define my, uh, to define my anatomical landmarks. Uh, okay. But later on, I, I do a really delicate, I try to do delicate uh, dissection with cold instruments. Okay, and any drills? Uh, do you use any oh, drills? Of course, I mean, the... the uh, Drills, if, if I need uh, to enlarge my uh, exposure, uh, then, then uh, as the initial step before taking any drill, I may try to get a curved punch uh, okay. to get a little bit of the uh, uh, beak. But if it's not going to be really uh, helpful, then I don't really hesitate to take my drill and, and uh, do a... a uh, draft type 2B or, or uh, IFAC uh, 5, I guess now, <laughs> uh, yes, according yeah. to the, the latest uh, classification. So, uh, Correct. I think this classification can be quite confusing, at least uh, initially. But looking at the poll results, it seems uh, uh, it is getting established. So almost uh, more than 30% of uh, our delegates are using IFAC classification. So that's very good. So thank you again. And you uh, we'll see you later on in the afternoon. Yeah, thank you. The head and neck surgeries you perform are vital. Your patients place their trust in you. You help them continue to speak and smile, eat and drink, hear and comfort. You're committed to helping them continue to live fully, to feel deeply, and to enjoy the quality of life they've come to expect. 
That means being confident that you're protecting and preserving your patient's head and neck nerve function during procedures. Introducing NIM Vital, the next generation of nerve monitoring technology. NIM Vital provides advanced nerve monitoring that helps you reduce the risk of nerve damage during head and neck procedures. Detailed intraoperative nerve condition information helps inspire your surgical strategy. An intuitive user interface with a wire-free patient interface allows for easy setup and enhanced visualization from the surgical field. Real-time notifications of nerve conditions, visually and audibly. Green, yellow, and red status bars provide visual information, and their associated tones provide audible cues, making monitoring function easier than ever. NIM Nerve Trend EMG reporting enables nerve condition tracking throughout a procedure, even when using intermittent nerve monitoring. And when paired with a NIM continuous monitoring electrode, you have continuous nerve monitoring informing your surgical strategy. NIM Vital pushes the boundaries of monitoring nerve function in various procedures in head and neck surgery. With real-time information available during surgery, giving you confidence in nerve function. Because protecting patients' nerves and senses is more than vital. NIM Vital. Imagine, what if you could do even more to bring relief to your chronic rhinosinusitis patients with technology customized to your unique clinical and facility needs? Introducing Stealth Station Flex ENT Navigation System, a customizable system from Medtronic ENT, a market leader in image-guided surgery technology, featuring six hardware configurations, an optional portable cart, Two different electromagnetic emitter options with flexibility in hardware design and optional software functionality. Get everything you need and nothing you don't with Stealth Station Flex ENT. Let's flex forward. Contact your Medtronic representative to customize a navigation solution that's right for you.